what's, what's your bond? What kind of check marks are check check points are you looking for him to hit over the next six weeks until until you guys break? You know what? I I don't have any checkpoints. I'm just seeing where he is. It's um, it's always a for for any rookie, always a um, a, a transition learning phase uh, when guys come in. So I don't put any um, any restrictions on guys or any real expectations. I just want to see what they are and um, and so far he is uh, his biggest asset on top of uh, that. He's big. He's physical. He's fast. I think I looked at our GPS and. Uh, boy, he is running fast. Uh, but the the best thing that I noticed is the willingness to be coached, the willingness to learn. So as hard as you can coach coach him, uh, boy, he he loves that and he excels with that. So I'm I'm really liking that part of it. Alan, what's the early impact you've seen Tremaine and TJ have on the defense, both on and off? Um, leadership. Uh, so that would be number one. Uh, uh, when before we even stepped on the on the field. Uh, the leadership, the the ability to galvanize uh, guys to bring guys together. So that would be number one. Uh, number two is both guys are instinctive and athletic. On top of boy is uh, is Tremaine Long. He uh, a lot of width, a lot of uh, height, uh, a lot of speed, and um, I like the way that TJ also the the way that the guys lead. So um, we when you have good leadership, you you always have a chance. On top of the, the guys are, are good players. Uh, so um, you notice that when they're making plays out there, directing the defense, leading the defense, uh, it, it starts right there in the middle, and we, we are getting that. What's your kind of full picture assessment of who Jalen Johnson is as a, as a corner in your defense? Yeah, um, smart, um, athletic, uh, good feet. Um, starting off, uh, we you know right away uh, showed the ability to, to tackle, um, and uh, but the one thing that shows up the most is uh, uh, he understands football. He really understands football, and so he sees the big picture and the ability to not just see the big picture. Sometimes when guys do that, they uh, they miss some of the details, but uh, he does both. When you, when you say sees the big picture, what are some kind of examples of, of things that? that yeah, uh, I don't want to give out specific examples because they were scheme type of things where um, we we had a, a defense on, uh, the offense came out there and uh, it showed up um, in terms of uh, the play that they were, uh, the offensive play, and then he diagnosed it, he saw it, and uh, there were times when it was his play to make and he made it, and other times when he alerted someone else to, the big thing is he took a step forward and alerted someone else that, hey, that was their play to make. So when I say big picture, that's kind of what I mean without giving you a specific. Do you feel like your cornerback depth has a chance to be improved this season with, with where you're at right now? Just you know what? We're in shorts and we're in t-shirts, so I don't know yet. I would, on the cuff, I would say yes, uh, a great deal because we do have uh, we do have talent there. Um, I don't know if you can ever have enough depth, uh, no matter how good your guys are. So I do like where we're headed, where we are right now, and then, uh, how our young guys are running around, how our guys that we picked up, uh, the vets are running around. But we'll. We'll kind of see um, uh, kind of what happens with it. And really the big test is uh, when you put pads on and how things shake out. But I really love where we are right now. Is uh, Jalen Johnson back out there today? Can I say no comment? Like, I'm gonna, you know what, I'm going to say no comment right now. Because, um, no, yeah, and, and I, I, I listen to the, I listen and I read. I, I can read. I, I do listen. Uh, I do. <laughs> and, uh I do think this. I, let, let me say this. Um, we we would love all our guys to be out there, but the way football is right now, it's um, it is it is optional. And I, I want the guys to be out there because I do feel that we have we bring value. I think we have the best coaching staff in the world, uh, the best uh, training staff, the best um, our uh, strength and conditioning staff. Uh, we have the best dietitian. We have the, I think we have the best of everything here. So I want guys to be here, but it is voluntary. So with that in, in mind, any of the players, um, it's, uh, they have to make a choice whether they're here or not. And I love the guys that we, um, I love all my guys. Um, the guys that are here, uh, we're going to coach them up and teach them and, um, and be the best that we can, the best that we can be. Alan, when you look across the field, 
field to the other side of the football because you study quarterbacks and how to defeat them um, and them. What, what stands out differently maybe about Justin? It's early, but... Yeah, I like your first word, defeat. Uh, yeah, so that means that we're on the winning on the winning side, not just defend. But um, yeah, Justin, a um, th- couple of things: leadership, because that's what you want in your quarterback. Uh, I see uh, good decision making; uh, that's what you want in your quarterback. I see improved accuracy; that's what you want in your quarterback. And uh, how fast he's processing. So that's also the you know in my mind what you want in your quarterback and. From day one last year to right now, um, from my standpoint, and I'm not a quarterback guru whatsoever, but I see how um, how he's grown um, from last year to this year, and uh, practice by practice by practice, uh, he's growing. So uh, you, you have to be encouraged when you when you see those things. What's the biggest step that Kyler Gordon's made from this time last year to now? That's not a pro- that isn't a product of just not being a rookie anymore. Well, it is a product of not being a rookie. It's just relaxing. Yeah. Last year, everything was just um, in a frenzy uh, because he wants to please, he wants to do, he wants to be so good. So it's just <laughs> all the all the time. And now he's okay. He's relaxing. He's playing within himself. He's got his feet up underneath him. He's calling. He's communicating more than he did. He already communicated before, but now it's more. So you can see when a guy can relax and go out there, and and we call it the RPMs. That is, RPMs are not always in the red all the time. So then, if they're not in the red all the time, that he is mentally alert, but he's physically relaxed in how he's playing. Now that doesn't mean that he's not going fast and he's not hustling and running to the ball, it just means that his RPMs aren't super high. Uh, so that, that would be the biggest difference. Are there reasons that make you believe your defensive ends can be more productive rushing the quarterback this year? I do. I do. And I would say yes, and I'd say what makes me think that. Yeah, just uh, being out there and seeing how they're working, how they're rushing the passer. Uh, we keep a chart of production, and their production is up different from last year, specific guys. Um, the understanding that they have of the defense. Uh, so all those things are better than they were last year. So that leads me to believe that uh, we'll be better. Now, the caveat is is that we don't have pads on right now. And so you'll never know until you know. But uh, the, the error was still, for me, it's pointing uh, up and sky high. Do any, of you more, do any of you stand out as far as looking different, putting on extra weight or strength speed? You know what, not just any, I, I think all of them. Um, Travis is, is stronger. You can see that uh, uh, just stronger in terms of his base. Um, uh, you see him, we got a new, couple of new additions, which I, which I like, uh, our new additions. Um, and the guys, all the guys are just, um, they've gained some strength to them, and so they look a little bit different in terms of um, their girth and their um, their muscular build, so and they're they're faster, they're moving faster and processing faster. So that leads me to believe again we're we're in shorts, but it still leads me to believe that the the arrow is up. Alan, yeah, with last the, time with we were the quarterback here. position, uh, just kind of with the makeup of it now for Kyler, just knowing kind of where you expect Tyreek to play and, and Jalen, does this give him a chance to really hone in just on like one thing where you're not maybe asking him, hey, master playing outside, master playing in the slot, but just having him focus that one area? Yeah, um, I, I would say right now where he's in at the nickel and we're doing a lot of that, and uh, but we've we've moved him all around still with the idea that he's going to play nickel, but. Um, you can never have enough corners in the NFL, so we're not going to just limit him to that. Uh, we're going to put him outside a little bit to keep his feet uh, keep his feet wet there, and so that if he needs to go outside, it's not like, gosh, I hadn't had any reps for an extended period of time. So um, nickel, and then if need be, he'll he'll go outside and um, go outside and function and function well. Last one, Alex. Last, last time we were here, we saw Tyreek from Assuming nothing has changed when we go out there today, mm-hmm. what are the things that he needs to do to, to break in with some reps with the ones? Make plays. Uh, make plays. Don't give up big plays. Understand the defense. Communicate. And I would say with that, the list can go on all the above. And that's not just – right now, and I don't put any 
any um, credence into uh, who you see going there first. Right now, it's a rep chart, not a depth chart. So um, they're just they're getting reps, and then what we do, we look at the to we look at it in totality and see, hey, these guys who first of all who can do their job, who can make a big play, who's not giving up big plays. That's as as important as uh, making a play. And then so we look at it, and then we go, okay. And then when we get to um, the, the fall and we see, hey, what guys are doing, and we'll make decisions as we start to play. But right now, don't put any credence into who walks out there, who goes out there first. Zero. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. Good morning. Uh, glad to see all of you guys uh, fired up to talk to you. But first, uh, I just want to express our condolences uh, to Bill McGovern, who you guys know was in the league for a long time, uh, coached here at the Bears. Uh, some of our players uh, know him and just want to send prayers to him and his family. Uh, really, really special guy throughout the league, well respected. Uh, and uh, just, just want his family to know our thoughts and prayers are with him. So with that, we'll open it up to questions. Back and, and sort of your reaction as the discussions were, were going as a coordinator of, of what you think about that whole proposal? Yeah, I think uh, the the rule is the rule. Like, yeah, so before it, like, that's like water under the bridge now, honestly. Uh, coach has kind of already spoken on it in terms of what he thinks is going to happen. We've discussed as a staff, you know, uh, what we think uh, the rule is going to um, do in terms of us basically schematically planning for it. So that's really where we are on the situation right now. Look, it's health and safety is the number one priority for us, the NFL, for everyone. So coach has kind of like really hit on that already. I'm At this point, what we're trying to do is try to figure out strategically how we're going to attack the situation and uh, what are the best the best ways to – to, to win the ball game. So that's that's where I'm at with everything. As you play chess with that, what are the things you have to consider both as a, a kickoff team and as a return team? Yeah, I mean, you just have to I – don't, I don't think really, like, to be honest with you, like it's the returner's decision to, to fair catch it or not. So uh, both teams got to play by the same rules. So, like, we'll see. I, I, I don't think – I don't think I'm going to lose – a lot of sleep or gain a lot of sleep either way on it. You, you, I, you know, I just, I'm just ready to play ball on it, really. So I just know in our division, our, I think I mentioned this to you guys before, but in our division, all four teams finished in the top five in kickoff return. So uh, guy in Green Bay, he's bringing it out like nine deep. He brought it out nine deep against us. So it doesn't matter. So we got to be ready to, we got to be ready to play ball. In, in terms of your up backs, though, do they need to be more sure? We we always use sure-handed guys back there, anyway. So it doesn't, uh, not really a huge issue. I mean, KB's been back there for us. Who's a ball handler? Ebner's been back there. Who's a ball handler? Uh, you know, so those guys would be back there like always. Yeah, I don't know, guys. It's a trial run. You know what I mean? Like we could talk about it forever, but we don't know until we play. So it's really to me. I'm just. I'm just coaching, just like we always coach. Like it's not, you know, coaches really already talked on it, and it's, I know it's a topic, but I'm, I, I'm, we working on punt today, and that's what I'm working on. In your opinion, go ahead. Who, who's right? Go ahead. In your opinion, will it, yeah. will it actually help reduce injuries, or could this be the same or lead to more? Yeah, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a doctor, Biggs. You know, I don't. I, I've seen the data. You know, just like we've all seen it, but hopefully, it, hopefully it does. I think the league's trying to do the right thing. We're all trying to do the right thing. We all care about our players, so uh, I don't know what it's, it's. It's a trial run, and then they'll vote on it again, and then we'll see. But ultimately, guys, it's in the returners' hands. So, Can you imagine the NFL someday without kickoffs? I don't. I, me personally, no. I just I think when you talk about uh, football. And you talk about basketball or you talk about baseball, what do they say? 
What time's first pitch? What time's tip off? What do you say for a football game? When's kickoff? When's kickoff? Right? It's a part of the game. <laughs> so. How, how are you going to handle um, your, your core group there? You don't have a whole lot of veterans, at least that have been here for a while, like you, like you did a year ago. You got, you got a, lot of, a lot of young cats. Yeah, I think we had a lot of young cats last year. We had a couple of veterans. We added some more. Uh, we had a lot of a lot of young. I mean, we had eight or eight at a time on the field rookies. So those guys are a year removed. So now, I mean, I wouldn't call them wildly veterans or you know veteran veterans. So I mean, they're a year removed. But we had eight on the field last time, and we got a lot of young guys again. That's the beauty of what we do, Coach Polk and I, is getting young players and developing them and getting them to a level where they have the confidence where they can contribute for us, and then they go and contribute on offense and defense and become really good players in this league. I think, you know, I've been very blessed throughout my career to work with some really good young players that are all on second and third contracts that developed, and I'm proud of those guys. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it, Biggs. Richard, did uh, DeAndre Houston Carson seem like a kind of a four-phase special teamer that was really dependable that a guy like you would really – Love. Did he lose some effectiveness last year that made him expendable, or were there other issues involved? Yeah, for me, I don't, I don't make roster, I don't make those decisions. I just coach the guys that we have. So everybody here loves the AC. We all love them, but I just coach the guys that are here. So What's it does, it didn't, it that that doesn't really, that doesn't really fall in my area. If I, I guess is the best way to, I'll, I'll coach the guys that are here. But he was as good as he did last year. It wasn't like he there was a drop off in your mind, in your mind, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to discuss players' performances in the media, but I thought he was a good player for us. Yeah, I thought he was a good player for us. Everybody does. Kind of He's always been, right? Right. Yeah. Who, who kind of replaces him as that kind of leader? You know, leader and just four-phase guy? Yeah, well, we'll still see. We'll see. Time still is an open slot there for any one of the new guys to do that or the guys that we have here. Uh, that could be, And that could be anyone, you know. Coach Flutes talks about leadership all the time. And first you lead, you got to lead yourself. So that could be a rookie, that can be a veteran, that could be anyone. But, yeah, he was a, a core piece of what we do. And uh, he's not here anymore. But it's time for someone else to step up. So, And I'm sure he'll be excited to see who steps up too. I mean, he's, he's a good dude. I've been knowing him for a long time. Good dude. Coach, when you look at the competition at the back of him, the wide right receiver room, Dante Hudson is a natural punt returner. Maybe not so much in terms of what we saw from Bayless last year, but do you think Bayless has that kind of ability and how you go through kind of evaluating that process as the summer goes along? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a good question, Herb. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to shake out on the field. But we think we believe in all our players. We think they all have ability to do uh, that job, the ones that we have back there. And we're continuing to develop them. They're both looking better than they looked last year, both Dante and Velas. And we got some more young kids. So we're excited about that group. They've been out there catching a lot of balls, catching a lot of live balls. Uh, Coach Young and Coach Tolbert and, and all those guys have been doing a phenomenal job working with them back there, and Coach Flus and all the guys. So it's uh, it arrows up on both of those two. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> process and for him to come here as a UDFA, what do you think that does for a kicking competition or just even trying to get the best, you know, the best situation out there? Yeah, I mean, uh, Andre, I think competition is always good. You know, uh, having more than one leg in camp is always good. Uh, I like What I like about Andre the most is the fact that he's a really, really good player, uh, really good quick ball rise, strike, elevation. Um, I like the fact that he's like has that one track mind, so he has the mental toughness and the fortitude to play that position. So it's good. I mean, working with him, just seeing him, and hopefully we can help him develop and, and and be a player and help him, you know, contribute to the team and feed his family long term. I mean, that's what that's what our job is. The coaches just develop them while they're here. I'm sorry. Is, is yep. Cairo Santos did struggle last year at times, especially with the extra points. Yeah, I would say that uh, Cairo Santos finished like fifth in the NFL and <laughs> kickoff and kicking uh, and kick in, in field goals, excuse me, kicking field goals. So 
I mean, if you call that struggling fifth in the NFL and field goals, our field goal team was fifth in the NFL. I understand the extra point question. And he fixed, yeah, and he fixed that. He fixed that towards the end. But, I mean, a lot of people would kill to have a top five kicker. So I think that I think that we got to make our extra points. And I think he fixed that towards the end of the year. But I wouldn't say that a top five kicker struggled. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, what he's shown me since he got into the building is basically he validated what we thought and what we already knew. Uh, obviously, it's all about how can he make his teammates better. He's a good teammate. Uh, he He's a strong, powerful player. Uh, and he's just confirmed that that was a really good selection. Now, with that said, we're still in helmets and shorts. I don't fall in love with guys in helmets and shorts. Like, you play football with pads, and I think that's a good part of his game. And I think he's a physical player. So we just hope that that takes the next step when we do get pads on. But the guy's, the guy's a really uh, intriguing prospect, and he's doing a really good job right now. You've been doing this long enough that you've coached through some pretty significant rules changes in the special teams. He's still on rules. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think you learn from every experience you have. So what I've learned from my other experiences is the question you're asking is to continue study, continue to try to find ways to be the best that we can be at what we do. And every everything is not the – it's not Apple. You know what I mean? It's not – It's everything's not comparable. But, I mean, what I've learned is just continue to study. Like, continue to study the rule, continue to study preseason. We went and studied college from last season and studied all that. So, I mean, I don't think – I really don't think that uh, – I mean, I know it's a hot topic, but, like, Coach I already spoke on it. Like, it's it's just – we're still playing ball, guys. Yeah. There's nothing I – I wish – I hope I gave you enough. I, I, I know you want more. I don't know what to give you. So. <laughs> yeah. Nine weeks, or even just going into training camp for both Cairo and Trenton, knowing last year they didn't have guys behind them pushing them in terms of competition. Now having another punter and another place kicker here, like what does that do? Like how do they have to maybe change their approach from where they were last year to now? Yeah, that's a great question, Courtney. I think that like competition brings the best in everybody. So really, if you're a pro at what you do, it really shouldn't change anything because you should be working like a pro every day. You should be competing against yourself. That's what I tell them. Like, you want to be better than the man in the mirror. Now, obviously, when a guy's next to you, you, you say, oh, well, it turns you up a little bit. But, I mean, those guys just got to do what they continue to – they just got to continue to do what they've been doing. And I, and I think it'll, it'll play out itself. So, good, guys? Thank you all. Thank you.